If you are attempting to become pregnant with IVF, there are two options for deciding when to place an embryo into the uterus. Right away, which is called a fresh embryo transfer, or later on after freezing the embryo. This is called a frozen embryo transfer, or FET. Followers of this channel know that we believe there is a substantial amount of evidence that your chance for pregnancy is higher with a frozen embryo transfer. But what about safety? Are there more or less pregnancy complications with a frozen transfer? Stay tuned. Hi, Dr. Randy Morris here. I am filming this episode of Infertility TV here at the American Society for Reproductive Medicine annual meeting in Anaheim. In the last several years, the number of frozen embryo transfers has been increasing. The number of fresh embryo transfers has been decreasing. One reason for this is the higher chance for pregnancy with frozen embryo transfer. There are a number of studies that have compared pregnancy complications and outcomes between fresh and frozen transfers. Recently, researchers gathered the information from over 30 of those studies, which were judged to be of high quality. Because pregnancy complications are higher with multiple pregnancies, they also looked only at singleton pregnancies. I am going to group the results by each complication. High blood pressure problems. High blood pressure can sometimes occur during pregnancy. It can be mild or severe. Severe cases can result in having to deliver the fetus early. Blood pressure problems in pregnancy can rarely result in stillbirth or death of the mother. Overall, this complication happens in 7 to 10% of all pregnancies. Frozen embryo transfers increase this risk 1.4 fold. In other words, instead of occurring in 7 to 10% of pregnancies, we would expect to see it between 10 and 14% of pregnancies. Diabetes. Diabetes in pregnancy is when the mother's blood sugar increases to a high level. Frozen embryo transfer does not increase or decrease the risk for gestational diabetes. Some bleeding after delivery occurs in all pregnancies. Postpartum hemorrhage is when the bleeding is excessive. This occurs in about 4% of all pregnancies and is more common after a cesarean section. In pregnancies from frozen embryo transfer, it will be slightly more common at about 5%. Placenta previa. Placenta previa occurs when part or all of the placenta covers the opening of the uterus, called the cervix. It can result in mild or severe bleeding during the pregnancy and can prevent a vaginal delivery. It occurs in about one in every 200 births, but is actually 60% less common after frozen embryo transfer. Placental abruption is when the placenta separates from the uterus. This also results in mild to severe bleeding and at times stillbirth. It affects one in every 120 pregnancies. The study showed approximately a 60% lower chance for having this complication with frozen embryo transfer. Premature delivery is when the birth happens before the 37th completed week of pregnancy. The earlier that a fetus is delivered, the greater the chance for having a medical problem or even not surviving. Frozen embryo transfers result in about 7% less premature deliveries than fresh transfers. Very premature births are those that happen before the 28th week. This delivery will usually result in severe medical problems for the baby up to and including death. Amazingly, frozen embryo transfers result in 20% less deliveries that are very premature. The term perinatal mortality is used if the fetus dies after the 28th week of pregnancy and before seven days after birth. In the US, it's pretty rare, about five deaths per one thousand deliveries. Again, frozen embryo transfer appears safer by reducing the rate by about 12%. Our infertility TV bottom line is this. Compared to fresh embryo transfer, frozen embryo transfers increase the risk for pregnancy-related high blood pressure and bleeding after delivery, but reduces the risk of placental bleeding problems, prematurity, severe prematurity, and perinatal mortality. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.